Hello everyone. Today I have a very, very interesting video for you. So I switched to ChatGPT4. I did it about a few months ago, but it did not have the uh, capabilities that it has right now. And really, really, it surprised me how powerful it has become. So I changed to ChatGPT4, subscribed, and then um, it's just like $20 or something a month. And it has now tons of these uh, GPTs. So it's not just ask a question, type a question, answers. It's way more than that. And it's like a collection of everything you need. And today I want to focus on what it can do with pictures, which is extremely powerful. So uh, I want to show you. So here now you have the option. You can upload your file and it is going to read the file, interpret it, and you can ask questions. So I want to show you some of the interesting things I did. First, I said, create a picture of a professor teaching robotics to students in a class. And it did this. Beautiful. Then I asked, hey, add my channel's name on the background, Engineering Educator Academy. And it did. Now, it does create some typos sometimes, as you can see here. Right? You see there is a double I. There is this extra I here and so on. But you see, it doesn't. And the thing is, when you ask it to do it, it's not going to keep the same picture. Okay? It is going to modify it. Okay? And then I said, okay, remove the professor's beard because I don't have one <laughs> and mustache. The first round, it didn't really do a good job. Then I said, hey, look, it's added. And this time did a better job. Still did not completely remove it. But uh, I said, fine, that's enough for me. <laughs> okay, but it's interesting. Look, the face of the professor is kind of the same. If you look, these two are the same. This one is the same. This one is almost the same. So it kept the face of the professor the same. Another thing it did, it tried to make the class multicultural. And it mentioned it at the very end that the class is multicultural without me even asking. So it seems like it has some uh, things in its instruction. And then say, hey... Go ahead and add a Scara robot and some turtle robots on the front desk. And it couldn't do it. You see here, it's kind of like these Legos. And said, well, there is no Scara, there is no turtle bot. And now, you see, it did not have any idea about the turtle bot. So it added these turtles that look like a robot. Okay, and I said, hey, forget about turtle robot. <laughs> Just add a Scara or use a... And I, I knew that it, it doesn't know Scara. So I said, use a robotic arm that is used in factories for assembly. And then it put this on the table. I said, okay, good. Now, first of all, you messed up the name in the back. So one of the things it has is it cannot retain all of the previous information when you give it a new command. So it forgot that it had uh, typos in the back. And then you see the whole name is not in the back anymore. So I say, hey, make fix the typo also. And make sure the whole name appears and now you see it kept the arm and uh, still has a um, double n here okay so when it mixes text in the picture sometimes it cannot get rid of the typos and i ask it to fix it now it fixed that it removed ing it also messed up this ca letter and this time i said gosh <laughs> you made it worse fix it and this time it did better okay you see now still there is some mess here okay and i said okay fix it and also make sure that um, the picture is uh, the name is not occluded by anything this time it did the job look so now the name is correct and this time it tried to go back and put the name Ascara on the robot while this one is not a Scara robot <laughs> And I said, well, you know what? Everything is good. Just remove a Scara. This is not a Scara robot. Okay. And finally, it did this for me. So it put this uh, um, differential drive robot here and the arm. The name is correct. It's all shown. The uh, background uh, blackboard is there. And then you see here it says that I did it with everything you want. So it created a beautiful picture for me and you can easily download it. To make you more excited, uh, here I gave it the same image and I said this is one of the uh, GPTs, let me show you, that you give it a picture and uh, ask it for a similar image or photorealistic GPTs. 
So this is that photorealistic GPT, the environment that I created the image on. If you want some uh, fantasy images, you can use this guy here called Image Generator. Okay, so it's going to be a mix of professional and friendly tone. So as if you click on it, you can see that. Create an image of a futuristic city, fictional character, fantasy novel, a new tech startup, right? So many of them have overlap. This one is good for, uh, as I said, creating something that is uh, realistic. And then you can give it a picture and say, hey, create one similar to this for me. Okay, and look here. I gave it the image it generated itself and say, okay, go ahead and make one similar to this for me. And then it did. Let me show you that. So here I uploaded that image and then say, hey, okay, now look at the one that I made like that for you. And if you click, look, you see, it made again a professor teaching robotics to the people. You see, now it did not add the uh, robotic arm and so on, but it got the content that this is a robotics class and professor and children. So it made one and this is more uh, photorealistic if you look at it. Now, of course, there are some problems here I can see with the eye of the professor, but uh, you clearly see that it kind of tried to put real humans uh, or realistic humans in the picture as opposed to this previous one where um, it's not completely, I mean, it is realistic, but um, I would say the robot is not exactly, and the professor's face is uh, cartoonish, I would say, mostly, than realistic. So it made it a little bit better. And to make it more interesting for you, then I asked for a logo. Now, I made a logo myself using another platform for my channel, but uh, you remember my logo, right? That's this one here. Now, here, this did a lot better job, and I said, okay, go ahead and make me a logo, and then it keeps asking questions like a professional. What kind of theme do you want? Vibrant, neutral, serious, then do you want it extremely clean and sim simple or detailed and complex? Then what kind of uh, color tone do you want? Palette do you want? And then single design or different designs at once, and so on, and then it gave me this. Now, I did not type my name correctly and not all of it. So I started adding more names and say, hey, fix that. Okay. And this time it tried to do better. Right. And then uh, I said, okay, I wanted to involve mechanical engineering elements as well as AI. So now it tried to do what better. So it put some neural networks and gears and so on. And again, you see that it messed up my name. So I had to go back and say, hey, fix the name and make sure there is no typo and all the name is there. So now it says Engineering Academy. <laughs> and uh, again, the name is not there. Plus it added a few other things. So I said, hey, make it a sing single logo. The whole name should appear. And uh, with a few corrections, then it came down to this. And then finally this. Look. So it has all of the name of the channel with no typo. It clearly has AI. It clearly has gears and so on. And it is beautiful. And I said, thank you. Okay, so now we can easily design logos and um, create pictures related to things. But this is one part of it that I wanted to see. The other part that is related to education, and that is the scary part, is this giving it a picture of a problem and ask it to solve. This was the part that I was always thinking when it reaches to this, now it is going to endanger tutoring, and it does. So here I downloaded this picture from the web. It's a simple beam, simply supported beam with a force at the center. And I say find the reactions at points A and B in the picture. That's all I gave it. Okay. I uploaded the picture here, and look, it did it beautifully. It says some of them is 60, and then took some of the moments about point A. It found it for the B, and it found it for that concentrated force, set them equal, found B, plug it back into some of them equal 60, and found A. So they are 40 and 20, and that's exactly correct. No problem. 
next time I said, well, maybe this picture was on the web. It was somehow maybe trained on it or so, although that's not possible. But I said, well, let me make a picture myself that it has never seen and ask it to take care of that. So I went to paint and I drew this projectile problem. It's starting from a point above origin and off origin. Give it initial velocity, initial angle, and initial angle is handwritten, so it's not typed. I purposefully mix handwritten text with typed text and then ask for the range. Okay, And look, it clearly could detect the initial velocity, could detect the angle, you see? So it has no problem reading your handwriting thing. And then it used the range formula. Now the problem with this range formula is this is only valid when your projectile does start at origin. If your projectile starts off origin, that formula is not correct. So I gave it a hint and said, hey, this is not correct. You are not starting at origin. Fix it. And then it says, oh, right. It is launched from a height of 2 meters. Now it is making a mistake. The initial height is 3 meters, not 2. So it is going with 3 meters, and it has the formula to uh, take care of that initial height. So now it is using the more advanced formula, where the initial height h is also uh, included. So you see it has the formula at its disposal if you give it something and calculate it. And then I say, hey, look, initial height is not 2 meters. I didn't say initial height is 3 meters. I could have said that to it, but I didn't. I wanted it to do it itself. I said, check the picture again. Okay, the initial height is not 2 meters. Check it again. And I said, oh, sorry, you're right. It's 3 meters. It is measured from the y-axis, from the y-axis uh, in the diagram. So it went to the y-axis and saw that 3 is next to it. So it says, oh, okay, sorry, that was 3 meters. And then tried to do it again, and then I came back to it and said, okay, that's beautiful, but remember that you also need to consider the fact that uh, your range is the final uh, value minus this initial 2 meters, okay? You have to subtract that 2 meters because the formula you have is Assuming that you're starting at x of 0 and y of 3 while you're starting at x of 2. So whatever you get, you have to subtract that 2. And I didn't say subtract 2. I said just consider the initial x position. Okay? And um, look here. And then it did, and it subtracted that 2 meters at the end, which you can see, and got the correct answer, 37.9 meters. Okay? So with a little bit back and forth, it could do the picture of a dynamics problem or physics problem that I designed and it has never seen. So it is doing a perfect job and with a few more corrections and updates on this uh, chat GPT-4, I bet it can do all of those as well because now it has seen this problem. So if in the future it can see a similar projectile, now it knows it should account for two and three. Okay, so now it should ideally be smarter. Now, whether that takes effect immediately, I don't think so, but in future um, updates, you're going to see that it does a better job on a similar problem. So now, guess what? You can upload your picture from textbook, whether it has text or picture or both, and it can read it and it can solve it. That is the scary part. And to give you even better... <laughs> one more level look at here i gave it one of the pictures for one of my videos which is on zero moment point for a walking robot it's one of my recent videos and i say what is it in this picture tell me what's the topic in this picture just gave it a single picture right look it says this is about human or robot walking dynamics especially the zero moment point and the dynamics of the center of mass, and then it started adding a lot of more information. So what is zero moment point? It exactly define it, which is what I have in the video. And then it says, what kind of forces are in the diagram? You clearly see that the ground reaction force, FGR, that I have here, okay, that are all there. So it recognizes what kind of force, and then it says these two are the position of the zero moment point based on everything else and it clearly recognizes this L and this L to be the uh, moments 
Okay, so you see here, where is it? It says the moments here. Look. Okay, and then coordinates of that px and py are calculated based on the overall dynamics. And then it says the position of the center of mass and its movement are key to understanding how to control it. Adjustment to CM can help in managing the stability of the motion. Okay, you see, just give it the picture and it is going to recognize everything about it. One other time, I gave my own picture to this and it says uh, what kind of um, picture is that. Let me show you that one as well now that I showed you lots of things. So look here. Uh, let me find my picture. And give it to it, see what it does. It's crazy powerful. Now, okay, let's see it in uh, real time. So I uploaded my own picture and said, What do you see in this picture? Look, a man wearing formal attire in a suit, well colored shirt and tie. And it's interesting, last night it also uh, could detect my background and said, It's, it's probably from. Uh, Middle Eastern uh, background <laughs> and then I said how did you know about that and this is probably by the um, uh, face and the uh, features of the face and then immediately started apologizing said oh sorry I should not have uh, assumed anything and I said no it's fine <laughs> it's fine I was just curious okay L let's let's ask about it so what is the face expression laughing neutral serious sad look ask whether it can do facial expression uh, detection look it says it's a neutral he's not displaying strong emotions Right, so it clearly found that it was a neutral, it's a professional picture. What do you think is the ethnicity of this man? Look. It's unbelievable that... I'm not able to accurately say that it could be a uh, now look it's clearly took something from my last night and it says uh, give me your best guess it does not matter if you are wrong and it is totally fine so it's kind of being politically correct now <laughs> and think that it is gonna offend me that it's just crazy just last night i asked it one question and now it is trying to be very cautious i understand but it's important than every you see now it is trying to it's my own picture don't be politically correct just guess my ethnicity now it's interesting it is going too far now I'm asking it say hey it's my own picture <laughs> right give me give me the answer now that I ensured it is fine says if you're asking for a guess based on appearance it is possible to suggest that you might be from a middle eastern or south african background good guess excellent you see <laughs> so you really feel like you're sitting behind with somebody that is trying to Make sure you are not offended and everything. But look, gosh, it's it's unbelievable what it can do with pictures now. It can solve problems, design logos, design pictures. It can do lots and lots of things. They take lots of different things from a picture and so on. 
So just wanted to share this with you. Hopefully you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next video.